The question was, what are the biblical reasons for divorce? What is the biblical reason of divorce? Infidelity. Adultery is the biblical reason. Now, there, there are other reasons that I believe are biblical, uh, potentially, but you must work these out with fear and trembling. And it can get a little bit more complicated. If you're in a, a physically abusive relationship, the Bible says that it is an abomination to deal treacherously with the wife of your youth. Okay, that's an abomination. So if your husband's beating you, if any, I'm telling you, leave him. And the reason I say this is because the Bible says if an unbeliever is, is willing to stay with you and you're a believer, stay. If he's not, we'll let him go. If he's beating you, he is not a believer. He is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Okay? If you're beating your wife, stop. And if you don't, there's probably a nice hot place in hell for you. Okay? I don't think I can say that clearly enough. And, and so, but anyway, I digress. Now, when we talk about leaving, adultery is a legitimate biblical reason, the only one that Christ gave. Um, again, with exception of some of the stuff I just talked about, I won't go back there. So the, as I say that, you have the right the legal right. Now, that's not what we need to ask as believers. We don't need to ask what is permissible. We need to ask what is wise. There are circumstances where infidelity is continuous and habitual. I would strongly suggest you get a divorce. Okay, Either that or you get an STD test regularly. That's what that looks like. I'm, I'm not trying to be base. I'm just telling you when habitual behavior like that becomes detrimental not only to, to them, but to you and your health and your family. But there are times when a spouse messes up and makes a mistake, and you maybe are believers now, or they come to Christ in this, and you say, I want to work it out. Infidelity, you don't have to leave them, okay? You can, but you have to decide, are you going to stay? And I'm just going to help you here. If infidelity has occurred in your relationship, are you going to stay together, or are you going to, are you going to divorce and end it? Make that decision early. If you decide to not end it, there's a couple things that will really, really help you when it comes nav to navigating infidelity. And these are, two, these are very, very simple things that people that fail to do and end up dragging out this process, and it becomes a point of contention that lasts forever. One, if you decide to stay together and that you're going to work it out, there has to be the implementation of the no fishing rule. Okay? If you're going to decide to stay, that means you are synonymously, you're, you're saying, I'm not only going to stay, we're not, going to, we're not just going to stay, we are going to trust. Now, if you are the offender, there's some things you need to understand. You may say, I'm sorry, and you may be legitimate, but you've got to reconcile that behavior. In other words, you have to take an active role in restoring that trust. Mm -hmm. Now, you have to also, if you're the offendee, have to take an active role in extending that trust. So how do we do that? Can I give you a very practical way of doing that that most people miss and it, and it causes great calamity? Hopefully you're not having to navigate this. If you have, here it is. Make a plan, a path forward that you both agree on and walk that plan out. Why do we do that? And it can be, it can be simple. There's a lot of places that can give you a lot of ideas. You need to ask as the offender, what do you need from me and make these concrete goals? Because what will happen if you don't do that and you don't meet these mile markers, the, the goal will keep changing. Mm -hmm. There'll be confusion. And if you get, and, and this is incredibly important, if you don't write these down and fulfill these, you understand it, it's, not just, it's not just intention, it's perception. The reason it has to be clear and concrete with set goals and goal markers is that there can be no, no wiggle room. The enemy will come and he will eat you alive. And every time you miss a goal, you compromise the trust. And, but, but there comes a point where you have to be intentional and you're never going to be intentional and navigate that distrust until you come up with a concrete plan of reestablishing the trust. With timelines and clear expectations, reasonable expectations. Uh, you know, accountability. You know, everybody goes, well, you need an accountability app or you need an accountability partner. Now, you need the Holy Ghost and, and you need to repent on the front end. 
And your spouse needs to trust that that is not behavior that you're going to repeat. There's no substitute for that trust.